The next thing we'll want to do as we start developing is get some models in here for our schema and then push them up to planet scale and make sure that data makes its way up. That data meaning the tables we create as a result of affecting our schema here. So I think we'll just keep things simple here. Let's create just a really simple data model, maybe two models. So the first one, let's call it customer. Model customer needs an ID. Let's make that a string. And it's the primary key here for this table. Let's have it default to a CUID, which is a collision resistant unique ID. More on that, more details on that in the getting started with Prisma course. Let's give the customer a name that will be a string, maybe something like email string as well. And then of course I like to do created at, which is a date time defaults to now and updated at, which is also a date time. And we can use this annotation here, updated at, which will automatically update this value whenever an update operation is made. Okay, so let's now get a second model. Let's make this one called invoice. Invoice needs the same stuff to start with, an ID defaults to CUID, same thing. I'll actually just copy over these two because we want these on every model and we can do it just easily by copying and pasting. Invoice can have a number, maybe that's an integer. We'll have an amount, an integer as well. I like to store this in cents instead of fractional dollars. The idea here is that we don't want to be playing with floating point values. We could, we could have a float type here instead of int, but I like to store money stuff in integers, just the value in cents and then just make the multiplication or division or whatever in the application itself. Now let's make the relation between these two. An invoice is going to have a customer. So we can point it to customer. If we hit save, we get customer ID coming through. I like to bump this up to be just underneath customer here. And then over in the customer model, I like to lowercase the first letter. It just takes the name of the model when that automatic relation is made. I like to lowercase the first letter there and then add an S at the end because this is a plural thing. All right, I think this model looks pretty good right now. Why don't we see if we can push this up to planet scale? And this is where things get a bit different than what we might be used to when using Prisma. Typically with Prisma, we are going to run a migration to get our data changes to take effect. To do that, we might do npx prisma migrate dev, and that would get us a migration file generated here in our development environment. And then when we push our code up to production, Prisma would be responsible for running those migrations. It's a bit different with planet scale. The idea with planet scale is that we aren't going to deal with migration files at all. The philosophy even of planet scale is that migration files are not really what we should be using. And that's because planet scale itself as a platform is responsible for allowing us to change our data models, so affect the state of our database through branching and merging. So just like we would cut a new branch in our code repository and push that branch up to GitHub and then open a pull request, the same model applies to planet scale. And it's for that reason that we don't need to deal with migration files through Prisma. So the recommended approach instead is to use Prisma DB push. We are connected to our database, or at least we should be. And what we can do is npx Prisma DB push. Now the error we run into here when we try to do that is related to foreign key constraints. And the issue here is that planet scale doesn't allow for foreign key constraints. That's a bit different. That's a bit different than what we might be used to with other databases. Typically in a relational database, foreign key constraints are what we want and they're used all the time. There's this link here. You can read up about why there are no foreign key constraints in planet scale. And fortunately, Prisma gives us a way to work around this. What we want to do is essentially tell our Prisma schema that we want Prisma to handle the relations. We won't have foreign key constraints handled or enforced at the database level, but Prisma gives us this thing called relation mode. We can do relation mode Prisma, and this is going to tell the database not to worry about foreign key constraints. That's just all handled through our database client here. Okay, so let's try running that again. We'll clear this away and do once again, npx Prisma db push. Before we do that, we should save this file, make sure that's saved. And after running that, we get the database is already in sync with the Prisma schema and we've got our Prisma client generated. Let's check things out over in the planet scale dashboard and see if we get our data reflected there. We can check out branches here. We've got our main branch and let's take a look at schema. There we go, we've got customer and invoice, perfect. 
We did get a note here in the overview that we don't have a production branch. Once we have a schema in place, we should promote a branch to production. Generally, what you'll want to do is promote main to production. This affords it some benefits like protected from direct schema changes. That's a good thing. High availability, automatic scheduled backups. That's what we want for our production environment. Later, we're going to branch off of main to make some changes, and then we'll deploy those changes up against main. So let's promote that branch.